Welcome, I'm Ron Daly, the Strategic Partner Lead for the Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative, uh, a co-op of 23 school districts in Eastern Kentucky representing 17 counties. Very honored to have with us a State Representative Angie Hatton, who's from Letcher County, lives in Letcher County, and her 94th district in the State House of Representatives um, covers all of Letcher and part of uh, of Pike County. Yes. And so you just had a chance to speak to some young people <clears throat> here, the members of the KVAC Student Senate. So talk about the young people that you just met and your excitement about what they're doing. Well, Ron, thank you for inviting me on this morning. As you know, I'm a big fan of, of The Holler and, and, and Ron Daly. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm glad to be here today. And I'm especially glad to get to talk to young folks. Um, I'd much rather spend my day with them than with politicians or lawyers. <laughs> but they are some of the brightest, um, most optimistic people that you'll encounter. I mean, kids have not had an opportunity to be, um, you know, jaded by the world yet. And they just, they, they seem like, especially the particular types of kids who'd run for students in it are, are just, um, they're full of ideas and they're awfully optimistic and they give me a whole lot of hope for the future of Eastern Kentucky. And uh, you are a very strong advocate for public education. I know you were at one time a member of the site-based council there when the school was I in. I was. I was elected for, for five years at the elementary school, Whitesburg Elementary, and then um, Whitesburg Middle School when my kids were younger. Talk about the state of public education and what you would like to see happen in public education in the Commonwealth. Well, you know, um, Ron, especially in Eastern Kentucky, where it seems like teachers are being asked to do more with less every single year. You know, it seems like their funding challenges um, are harder and the expectations on teachers and administrators at public schools in Kentucky are just getting um, pretty overwhelming sometimes. You know, they're um, expected to have such high achievement and we keep um, neglecting to give them the tools they need to do their job. And I think that it's time in Kentucky that we respect teachers for the job that they do, and school administrators and, and classified school employees. Um, I think that it's high time we recognize how important they are to our community and um, start rewarding all of their hard work instead of adding criticism on top of um, the, the terribly hard job that they're doing. Well, uh, being a state legislator <laughs> is a hard job too. Uh, you're constantly uh, having people that are not going to be pleased with the whole General Assembly, politicians in general, and then even good legislation you might be proposing. Why did you take up that challenge and that aggravation to run for the State House of Representatives? Well, I just couldn't seem to talk myself out of it, no matter um, what, what reasons. I, I tried to tell myself that I didn't have the time, didn't have the financial resources, and um, um, all those things that you would use to talk yourself out of it. But honestly, for me, um, Ron, it was almost like an altar call kind of a yeah. feeling. It just was a, a powerful pull. And um, a lot of the folks that I've talked to, the really good legislators and, and public officials and those who work in the public sector, a lot of those who are there for the right reasons and, and, and are, are there to really try and help feel a similar pull, you know, so uh, uh, if folks who are listening feel that pull, I urge them not to ignore it. Well, you've only been in now, I guess, in your second term. Yeah. Uh, so time goes by fast, but you've, you've proposed some very good legislations and bills. What uh, what legislation that you have offered that you feel <clears throat> the best about? Oh, well, there was one thing that I worked with the Kentucky Secretary of State about that affects young people in particular, um, and that was to allow folks who are 16 and older to start working, uh, be poll workers, and um, help with the election process. I think it would get kids yep. interested younger. Um, but um, of course, I support all the legislation that's going to help public schools and reject any legislation mm -hmm. that uh, in any way would promote a charter school or even a voucher program that would take funding from our schools. Funding's tight enough as it is. Um, and um, yeah, just always try to look for ways to help public education. Uh, 
you represent an area, well, Letcher County in particular is one of the very hardest hit areas with the loss of coal jobs. You know, we've lost, uh, you know, so many thousand in, uh, uh, in the last about six, seven years. Um, what are the things that we need to do to help the quality of life to improve, uh, to keep people from having to leave the region because of the absence of jobs? Uh, what can we do to grow the economy? Well, you know, we have a dedicated group of people in Eastern Kentucky that are devoting their energy and their resources to trying to solve our problems. We need to listen to those folks. We need to listen to the young folks and their ideas. Um, we've got to diversify our economy, you know. Um, maybe coal can still be a part of it, but it can't be the sole driver anymore of Eastern Kentucky's economy. So things like um, farming, um, hemp farming, and um, even medicinal marijuana, um, and um, basically just finding ways to use our resources, so any tourism opportunities, um, trail systems, we're working on an ATV trail system that should bring a lot of folks to this area. Um, there's going to be a big announcement tomorrow at SOAR for a, something good that's happening in Letcher County, tourism-wise, that I shouldn't shouldn't spoil probably, but uh, it's going to be a, a really interesting tourism opportunity to draw folks to this area to see the beauty that we have here and, and sort of take advantage of, of what God gave us here in Eastern Kentucky. We need to um, continue to put money into fighting our opioid crisis because not only is that killing good folks in Eastern Kentucky and ruining families and communities, it's also making it harder to um, promote economic development here because we need to make sure we have a, um, a workforce that can pass drug screens yeah. and um, um, not be folks being a drain on society, but being able to be productive members of society again. So our method so far of just incarcerating people has not worked and we have to find other ways to do it because um, you know we're, we're learning that just putting folks in jail doesn't stop them from being addicted and that a lot of these folks would never have committed a crime if they weren't addicted so they need treatment. And that goes back to the earlier question you talked about the special challenge that teachers have we're putting so many responsibility on them with the breakdown of the family and the fact that our state has the highest percentage of kids in school that are being raised by someone beyond their, besides their parents. That's right. And, uh, and so, and then our region is even higher than the rest of the state. Yeah. So our teachers here are almost have to take the role of the mother, dad mm -hmm. as, as a part of that. Yeah, with so many of their children in out of home placement, and I did juvenile court as a prosecutor for nine years. So I did those placements and removals every Tuesday of my life for nine years and I definitely know what that looks like but um, it, since we are the state that has the highest out-of-home placement we're also the um, highest in the nation next to only Oklahoma and I think we're expected to surpass them this year in our rate of incarcerating women mm -hmm. and of course that an awful lot of those women have children so yeah. that's leaving more and more children without their mothers because you know they have to be placed somewhere else while their mothers are incarcerated that often a teacher or a school system is the only stability these kids have. Um, and expecting the, par the teachers to have time to nurture them the way that they need to be nurtured while at the same time getting lessons plans and um, you know sometimes there's talk of cutting funding for friskies when those are the first line for these kids to protect them. Often it's a friskies worker who notices they you know, don't have proper clothing for the season or that they uh, appear to not be healthy and or bathed and, and, and that's often the way we would identify a problem at home is from these risky workers. So we have to make sure they have the funding they need to do their job mm -hmm. and that uh, we take some of the stress off of teachers worrying continuously about their retirement system and allow them to focus on the things that they really um, plan to do when they decided to become teachers, and that's help kids. Um, you're very fortunate to represent an interesting part of the state, and you know we talked about there's hot spots of exciting things going on in different communities. But Whitesburg, Whitesburg is developing a, a vibe. I know uh, you've got some young entrepreneurs that created some interesting opportunities, whether it's 
Kentucky Moonshine Mist, whether it's the parlor with the tattoo, the music venues, uh, and eatery. So there's some exciting things going on in Whitesburg. Yeah, I'm awfully proud of my hometown. I, I, I really appreciate you offering me the opportunity to crow about them for a minute. But there, there are some really creative people in Whitesburg who just are also real stubborn and determined that we are going to save our town. We're going to save Eastern Kentucky and we're going to try different ways until we figure out what works. But there are some, some new places to eat and um, you know, there's the vinyl record shop downtown, and uh, the Live It Amp concert series brought some really amazing uh, music talent from all over the world to, to come to uh, Whitesburg for free concerts, 10, summer, 10 weeks this summer, and uh, they brought with them lots of folks who were amazed at our little town, and we really loved the opportunity to show it all. And then you got Apple Shop which is mm -hmm. also a bunch of young, creative people doing some exciting stuff. Yeah, and, and so they sort of rotate in and out from other parts of the country, and um, we get a chance to, to show them what Eastern Kentucky's like, and each of them that comes tends to make a little little change in the community as they come here and impact it because they're some talented folks and sort of a little cultural hub there in their town. Well, for people that don't know Eastern Kentucky or its people or its natural resources and mountains, what is it that you'd like to tell the world about why you love living in Eastern Kentucky? Well, you know, I moved away to Central Kentucky. I was gone for about 11 years between college, law school, and, and working for um, several years before I moved back home. And, uh, you know, when I first came back home, it, it was a little bit of a shock again at how well everyone knew me. And everyone that, that knew me and remembered me as a kid knows me five or six different ways, mm -hmm. you know, because our roots just run so deep here. And when you know someone um, because you grew up with their sister and their mom might have taught you and, you know, their dad was uh, a part of your, your church experience or, you know, uh, brother used to mow your grass and all the different ways that you can know someone, it, it's a deeper knowing of each other and a deeper caring about each other. And uh, we tend to extend that to strangers too when they come in. Uh, the biggest selling point, and I've seen a lot of surveys about tourism, um, our biggest selling point here besides our natural beauty is our friendly people. We really just uh, tend to reach out and, and try to help and uh, offer hospitality and, and food and, and uh, I hope that folks who come from outside will get a chance to um, really talk to some of the locals when they come in, because they really are the finest people anywhere. Well, and I'm one of those foreigners, born out in North Dakota, grew up in Texas, New Mexico. 44 years ago, I came in to work at Alice Lloyd on Caney Creek, and the people there embraced my family so much, and so I've been a part of them. And the one thing I've learned, hitting on some of the things you said, that what people don't understand is that People very family oriented, very traditional oriented. They're very they they they're very proud of their ancestry and of what they've accomplished. Love these mountains. There's a strong tie to the land. So because of those factors, people don't want to leave. And so when you've had the terrible economic downturn, a lot of people say, "Well, just move away, find other mm -hmm. places." But there is a very strong attachment to place here in Eastern Kentucky, yeah, more so than other areas. I don't think people understand what that means when they tell us just move. I, I don't think they understand um, how deeply troubling and affecting that is. Um, I can't tell you how many people I know who moved away to find work in their youth who can't wait to get back as soon as they retire. And I'm sure you know all sorts of yeah. people. They may, may have gone to a more industrial um, based city and, and gotten a job in manufacturing, but as soon as they get a chance, they're always coming back home. Even Mark Twain said that he never met a Kentuckian who yeah. wasn't either on his way home or talking about going home, yeah. because this is their home, and it is hurtful to yeah. hear people say that we should just pick up and move. And I understand it when people have to do it, Ron. I'm not yeah. criticizing them, um, you know, but for those of us who are trying really hard to stay and to make a living here and to make it a, a a place that other people can move back to, you know, it means a lot for people to acknowledge how much our home means to us. I know, I just overheard you talking to some young people saying that you'd like them to be interns, to come down and work with you. You're always interested in listening from people 
your constituency as well as other Kentuckians. So uh, how can people in this area get up with you? What's the best way to do that? Well, you can email me at angie.hatton at lrc.ky.gov. Um, you can reach out to me by phone at the Legislative Research Commission. It's 502-564-8100. Um, and you can find me at my law office in downtown Whitesburg or, you know, just about everybody has my cell phone number. So I, I really don't mind how you reach out to me. You find me on social media. Um, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. And uh, every way that you can get a hold of me, people do, you know. And I don't mind that. I, 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 I love the job and I love the opportunity to get to talk to people. And any time that I find myself complaining about any aspect of my job, I try to remind myself that I literally went door to door and begged for this job. So. <laughs> but I do love my job. Absolutely. Okay. It means a lot to me. Representative Angie Hatton, thank you so much for thank being on our program. I appreciate me. it.